Armored Core Lore, the story of Armored Core, Master of Arena. The year is EDO 130, where a now rebuilding human race is living in underground cities, controlled by two corporations known as Chrome and Murakuma Millennium. These two giants' production have made nearly all the cities their own. However, even that is not enough for the power-hungry corporations. For one young raven, his story begins when his home of Isaac City becomes a battlefield for one of the many battles between these corporations. During this battle where civilians ran for their lives while corporate forces simply pushed on against their foes, their reckless fire and the power of a certain red armed corps would cause the loss of many lives, including the lives of the family members of this young raven. Their deaths would be the match that lights a fire of revenge inside him, burning with hate for the red armored corps that he knew killed his loved ones. For months, the young raven would hunt for information about the Red Armored Corps through the city's information network known as Nerve. And finally, through endless nights of searching, he would learn the name of the pilot of the Red AC who killed his family, Hustler One, the number one ranking AC in the organization known as Raven's Nest. But to him, it did not matter how high this killer was, this young man would do anything to kill the one who took away his loved ones. And that is when he gets a message. A message from someone named Lana Nielsen. And in the subject heading it read, Do you want to be a raven? It would be a message that sets the young man off on his path of revenge, as he answers with images of the red AC in his mind, yes. From here, she would direct him to the raven's nest, the home of Hustler One and to many mercenaries for hire. Here is where he would take the test to become a raven, before finally he would receive another message from Lana Nielsen. Congratulations, how does it feel to finally be a raven? I'm your raven's nest contact and the person in charge of handling negotiations with requesters to sort out your missions. Orders must be followed to the letter. It would go on to advise the male raven to take caution in missions, as there is no telling what he may come up against. Also, his first mission was waiting for him. The first mission for this new raven would be a fugitive capture, a hacker known to target corporations. The Iger City Guard did capture this criminal, however he escaped, hijacked an armored car, and fled into a botanical zone, a zone where plants are grown for the use in skin and hair products, and others that are derived from a plant, such as flavoring agents. The hacker had already taken control over the MT security force on site, as such the Isaac City Guard wanted this done quickly and effectively by a raven. With this information, the raven sets off and proceeds to destroy 30 MTs called Spatula, as seen here from the Armored Core Master of Arena guidebook. After this and destroying the controls for the gates to the area the hacker is hiding, the raven is quick to corner the hacker who admits he has no chance against a raven and is getting out of the armored car to surrender when... Hi, Paul. What's a top-ranked arena AC doing here? I heard you've been looking for me. I don't care who you are. No one can defeat me. It was as if the killer of this raven's family knew he would be here, even mocking the raven, who is told by Lana that they need to talk back at the raven's nest. Here, the Raven and Lana will talk through email once more. This time, she reminds the Raven that the first time they met on the network, meaning Nerve, the network all information passes through in the underground cities, that he wanted to become a Raven to kill someone, only then to bring up Hustler One's name, and how that Raven is ranked number one in the arena, stating that is all we know on the Raven you're after. To reach this Raven, she tells him that he will need to have a corporate sponsor to even get into the arena before warning the Raven, that anyone who attempts to face Nineball in battle will surely be destroyed. If you're willing to risk your life, I can arrange it so one day you will fight him. That is all. The message made it clear to the Raven to get even a chance to kill Hustler One, he would have to find a corporate sponsor, a task that could only be done by showing his skills in missions. As such, the Raven moves out performing missions, such as destroy the maintenance computer in ProdTech's weapon manufacturing facility, which has malfunctioned, resulting in the factory being overrun with faulty MTs, who attack anyone in sight. The MTs found in this mission would be called Tri-Guards. Another mission would include recovering a meter from Northern Rock's Heaven's supply point for a corporation named R&G Industries. The Raven would be there to witness the meteor crash, 
before having to kill flying NTs named Kafas and another raven by the name of Inki. This raven and AC had different names in the Japanese version of the game. After this, the raven would perform more missions, including one from Progtech, once again to attack a transport truck filled with unknown material, and recover secret files, where a research group by the name of Izumi Materials is attacked and the files about their research are stolen. The thief is making a getaway in an armoured truck, and the raven has to give chase, stopping the thief before he flies in a helicopter waiting for him at a nearby airport. On this mission, the raven can either kill another AC by the name of Frogman, or let him live and only kill the thief. It is after this, however, that things would start to really move for the raven, and he receives a message from Lana again. This time it reads, A corporation has extended an offer to sponsor you in the arena. The sponsor is Progtech, one of the companies operating in the arena. There is one condition though, you must defeat all ravens currently associated with the arena. The company wants to see what you're capable of. I have done some research, and it does not matter who you fight. But remember, they are all ravens, just like you. That is all. What this means is the raven has to kill off a current raven in the arena to make room for himself. And it would seem Lana already had three targets in mind. However, since this was for his benefit, he would not get paid for the kill. As such, this was coming out of his pocket. The three targets Lana had found for the raven include a raven named Sweet Devil and his AC, Evil Kiss, who the raven could kill in the mission Cavern Invasion, a female raven named Ideal and her armoured corps, Goldie, in an Isaac City construction site under a false mission brief to lure her in. However, if the raven chooses to take this mission, he will also kill another raven named Superb Hunter and his AC, Superbow. And finally, a raven named Bugsy and his armoured corps, Hercules, outside of Chrome headquarters, as he is acting as a guard there. No matter who the raven kills, Progtech will see his skill and sponsor the raven. However, he will only be able to fight in the sub-arena, an arena where ravens have to prove themselves before being allowed to enter into the higher ranks, where only the top class ravens are, where Nimble reigns as its top contender. It's clear at this point to the raven that the path to Hustler 1 would require him to fight in this sub-arena and take missions to allow him to upgrade his own armoured core for the fights to come. As such, that is what he would do, climbing the ranks of the sub-arena while also taking on missions such as a defense submarine where the raven would fight off helicopter bombers named slings and a battle cruiser. Another mission would include enemy fortress where the raven would take out the defenses of a large fortress located at the northwest white land old castle. Here he would take down a number of anti-aircraft guns, large artillery, buddy MTs and a raven named Nia and his AC stalker. It's then after all this that suddenly the Raven would get a message from his sponsor requesting his aid with an emergency. Their marine lab comes under attack by an unknown force of MTs. While they seem to have no clear objective, they came in force, and so far, Protek has already dispatched one Raven to stop this attack. However, all he was able to do was stall the attackers for a while. In truth, they have a very important company official housed within this lab, and he needed to be rescued and brought to safety. While the raven was not sure, since this mission seemed to have not passed through raven's nest. However, in the message, it made clear Progtech would not wait for an answer, as with their right as a sponsor, they had temporarily revoked the raven's license to participate in the arena. This situation left the raven no choice. Without the arena, he would never be able to reach Hustler 1. As such, he accepted the mission and headed out. The raven would arrive at the sea-bound lab on a hover transport from Progtech, before jumping off and attacking a number of entities called Stinkbugs that seemed to be the attacking force, or what remained of them. After their defeat, a door of the base would open and the first raven from the mission, Fritz, would roll out to thank the raven for his help, as his ammo reserves had run out. It should be noted here that this is not the same Fritz from the Armored Core Master of Arena novel, instead this is a different AC as shown on screen. However, the pair have little time to chat more, as suddenly from the water a large MT jumps out, like a creature from the sea depths and lands on the floating base. This MT would come to be known as Merman, an MT capable of amphibious operations. However, at this time, Fritz would run for it, with the MT firing upon him. It's unclear here if the Raven was able to save Fritz or not. Either way, the Raven would take down this new foe and return to base. Upon returning, however, the Raven would have two emails, one from a man named Elon Cubis, he introduces himself as the head of development at Progtech. He thanks the Raven for the rescue from the marine base 
However, he does want the Raven to know that he thinks the amphibious MT that attacked is odd, as no corporation or company has achieved this yet. As such, he fears an unknown group is using technology before the Great Destruction to attack Pogtech. The next email is from Lana, and her words are very different kind of warning, as she writes, As I explained earlier, I am your Raven's Nest contact, and the one who will supply you with your orders. You will follow the orders you're given, and do as you're told. Even if you are approached by a sponsor, you are not to accept any missions without my approval. Don't let it happen again. That is all. It's clear to the Raven now he will have to tread carefully after upsetting Lana. As such, he continues to rise in the ranks of the sub-arena and perform missions she sends him on, including destroying a giant tank being used by a group of terrorists, destroying a cannon designed to take down satellites, which would also see the Raven kill another Raven by the name of Lok Kagos and his AC Tollkeeper, board the spaceship, which would see the Raven try to find his way through a vertically crushed spaceship to find a Proctec research team which had come under fire. After this and climbing more ranks in the sub-arena, Proctec would once again contact the Raven with another request. However, it would be through Lana this time who writes how the Raven seems to have flown up the ranks of the sub-arena, and how it would soon be time for him to enter the arena when Hustler 1 makes his home. In reading this, the Raven at once heads out to support his sponsor, this time with a secret material that was stolen by a Raven named The Wolf. He fled into an abandoned mine, and now Proctec wants the Raven to get the material back. Once again, the Raven's right to battle in the arena is revoked until this mission is done. As such, with little choice, the Raven heads out, deep into the abandoned mine, taking out MTs named float suits and spatulas before killing Wolf in his AC and recovering the material. This success pleases Progtech, who sends the Raven a message after, sending their congratulations on a job well done and how they have now registered him as a contender in the arena. They explain usually a raven would have to wait for one of the 15 ravens of this arena to drop out. However, a space recently opened up, as such he may take their place. The reason this space became available is thanks to the raven killing wolf, who held rank 14 in this arena. As such, the raven would now step into the arena when Hustler 1 waited at the top. As such, the raven would focus on climbing the ranks of this arena. However, it is when he defeats the rank 10 raven, Shadow Master, that suddenly Proctac contacts him again. Another emergency request, this time to defend their lab located in the center of Isaac City, as an unknown group of MTs are attacking in groups to break him. They fear the target of the attack is Leelan Cubis, and request the ravens help in this. Of course, the raven's hands are tied once again, as his arena license is temporarily revoked, as such he heads out to the lab. Once at the lab, the Raven will be dashing from gate to gate that leads to the lab to stop the invading group's split forces consisting of MTs called Wasps, before a single foe is reported near another gate. The Raven heads there hoping this is the last one, however it is surprised this foe is none other than Hustler 1's AC, Nineball. A battle begins between the Raven and Nineball, with cannons fired and energy shots burning the pillars around them. Finally, the Raven damages Nineball to the point the AC flees. It's a tough battle, however things would only get tougher for the Raven when he returns to read his emails. One would be from Elan, thanking him again for saving him and how he had no luck with his research on the amphibious MT. However, seeing that this time Nibel came, he decides he will start looking into this AC instead. The other email, however, is of much greater importance as it is from Lana Nielsen with the title Support Cut Off, and it reads... You are warned not to accept any requests without my approval. I am no longer acting as your contact at Raven's Nest. In fact, I'm cutting off all support to you. Good luck, you'll die soon enough. Losing the support of Lana, however, does not bother the Raven, as with enough credits in his pockets and Progtech paying the repair bill for his arena fights, the Raven would only focus on the arena, raising from rank 10 to 4, before being called again by Progtech and another email from Elan. Opening Elan's message first, the Raven reads that Elan has discovered that any corporation that has to do with Nineball either experiences massive growth or a rapid decline. The attacks on Progtech, he believes, are to finish the company off. However, the reason behind it still remains unknown to him. However, it seems this Raven has a hidden agenda. Putting this aside, the Raven then reads the request from Progtech, a mission request to eliminate intruders in the Progtech headquarters. It seems after transferring Elan to their headquarters, it suddenly has come under attack with Elan inside. 
The attackers are again an unknown force, and on-site security is unable to stop them as they race towards the building's core, where Elam is based. With his license suspended once more by his sponsor, the Raven moves out, storming the headquarters to take out this invading force. Consisting of stink bugs and heavy bold MTs, as he does this, however, Elan contacts him. This is Elan Cubis. Nine Bowl is right in front of my current location. It seems as though I am not his target. I think he's waiting for you. Be careful. Nine Ball appears to be waiting for him, where Elan is hiding. As such, the Raven makes his way there, only to meet the Red AC itself, who has some words for him. People who have too much power will destroy everything. You are one of those people. Another battle between the Raven and Nine Ball would ensue, with more holes being blasted in the walls, energy shots marking the Raven's AC, while he fires off his own weapons at Nine Ball, until finally the Red AC blows up. It looks to be the end of Nine Ball and Hustler One. The Raven takes a moment to breathe, before Elon radios him to report that all remaining forces are retreating, and he wants to talk to the Raven later about Nine Ball. The Raven, however, paid little mind to this, as for him, he had killed his target, and with that, his revenge is done. Or so he thought. For returning to the nest and checking the ranking, he finds that still sitting at the top of the arena is Nine Ball. The Raven knew he had killed him, he'd seen it with his own eyes, yet there at the top of the arena, Nine Ball remained. Elon would also have the same thoughts as the Raven, as in his emails to the Raven after the mission, he would question how Nine Ball is alive too. However, what Elon did find is that Raven's nest had been tampering with his data, but for what purpose he did not know yet. Whatever the case, the Raven had no time to stop and think about this. His family's killer was still alive. As such, he would have to keep climbing the ranks till he could face Nine Ball, taking the number 3 Raven Max and the number 2 Raven Pandora in the arena, before again he would be disturbed by emails. One from Elan who reveals he did some digging in the Nest's database on Nine Ball and found a strange word, H1. To Elan, this is strange it sounds like a part, not a Raven's name. As such, he is suspected that Hustler 1 may not even exist, and along with this, the Raven's previous contact with the nest, Lana Nielsen's name, is also within the database on Nine Ball, meaning she must be connected to him in some way. At this point, the Raven's head is spinning at this suggestion before he sees the other email is from none other than Lana Nielsen, which reads, It has been a while. Congratulations on reaching the second highest ranking in the arena. I never thought you would achieve such success. Your skill has far exceeded my original estimation of you. You have become too powerful. Do you remember? I told you I'd arrange a meeting with Nineball for you one day. Well, that day has arrived. The Raven had no idea what she meant until he receives a mission from none other than Lana. This mission asked him to come to a factory outside of Isaac City and meet her there if he's got it all figured out. To the Raven, this is clearly a trap. However, if Nineball had something to do with Lana, then what choice did he have? As such, the Raven would head there alone, only with his armoured core, he would enter, only suddenly become under attack from Nineball. However, Nineball fell too easy. Something was not right. As such, the Raven went in deeper. As he does, the voice of Lana comes over the radio. Are all of you here? Then, Hustlers 1 joins in, mixing with Lana's. The Corporation, the ACs, the Raven's Nest. All of these were formed by me! For the sole purpose of recreating the world and humankind with it! That's the duty to which I've been entrusted! The pair seem to be moulding together, talking about their purpose and how they all created all corporations and armoured cores. Just who are these people? The Raven will not find that answer out. However, walking down the corridors, he would see the lines and lines of Nine Ball ACs all waiting. Nine Ball was not one AC, but a mass-produced AC, and he would soon see this in action, as the Raven would then have to battle two more Nine Balls as he carried on. A hard battle fought between the two, the Raven emerges victorious. The defeat of these two Nine Balls, however, would lead for the voice of Lana Nilsson and Hustler One to speak again. I was created to protect mankind and this world. 
I intend to fulfill this task. The raven did not understand. However, he carried on down a lift until he came to a new foe, a monstrous looking nine ball, which seems to have been modified and is taller than an AC. It is here the final battle between Raven and the final line of defense of whatever called itself Hustler One. This machine of death and terrifying power would later be named a Nine Ball Seraph. The final defense, as would later be learned, the same AI from Armored Core One, who had used the name of Hustler One and Lana as covers to keep control over everything going on. However, with the Raven's defeat of Nine Ball Seraph, he would watch as the machine burned all over. Flames spouting out of its arms and legs, its body shaking as its insides fried. And yet, it tries for a final shot, only for its arm to blow off. And finally, it would fall. After this battle, the Raven's last action is to leave the arena. His destination unknown, yet what would be clear, however, is just a short time after, Raven's nest and all its functions would fall silent. And the underground world would fall into a war, known as the Great Depth War. This ends the report on the story of Armored Core, Master of Arena.